Well, I'm much more a virologist than anything. Then I, I really believe in viruses for many things. And I believe that they could be uh, very reliable markers of uh, environmental contamination. And uh, I will show you some of um, our data that we have collected uh, on the southmostern part of Brazil um, about the presence of viruses in uh, surface water. Well, of course, I'm a virologist, so uh, first of all, I believe that viruses are beautiful. And that's some kind of strange taste, but um, it's something that I developed almost 20 years ago, so I believe on it. Um, second, uh, viruses has to be, uh, have to be uh, searched or surveyed in water because um, they are dangerous, especially for children and uh, elderly, and also immunocompromised the patients. Um, you see that more than 80% of the, the, attend the, the hospitalizations and all these in, in, in developing countries may be due to gastroenteritis caused by viruses. So uh, this is something that we have, we, the Latin Americans especially, have to, to deal with it. Um, and uh, we, adults, or healthy adults normally share these viruses or shed these viruses to the environment in asymptomatic conditions. There are many of them. There are more than 100 viruses uh, that could be shed by fecal oral route and may reach the water bodies um, to contamination, uh, especially by non-treated sewage. And non-treated sewage is a huge problem uh, especially in Brazil. They are very resistant to many of the disinfectants that we use in treatment of uh, sewage and uh, in the treatment of uh, uh, or, or the production of drinking water. And um, they are very important causes of gastroenteritis. Uh, one of the most important is uh, rotavirus. Rotavirus responds for more than uh, half of the gastroenteritis cases in, in uh, children below five years old. And there are many others that could uh, um, cause gastroenteritis, uh, not only in children, but also in adults. The major sources of infection for viruses or enteric viruses are water, both. Uh, uh, mineral bottles or uh, tap water and uh, uh, food or feed that is uh, contaminated by the water that irrigate the plants or uh, even the water that we use for, for cleaning of material or the food itself. This slide is very interesting, I believe. This is a very recent um, uh, publication by the, pub, uh, the, the, the staff of Do Dr. John Rose from the University of Texas. And uh, she made a huge meta-analysis of the data that was published by uh, many groups of uh, environmental virology around the world. And she showed us that, uh, well, when you, have, when you see red dots, it, uh, it could tells us that uh, something like 10 to, the 50, 10 to the 15 or 10 to the 17 um, viral particles are being shedded to the environment in a year basis. So the contamination is huge. And a huge problem that accompanies this is that viruses are not used as markers of fecal contamination. Um, this slide is to tell you that I'm in huge trouble right now because I get enrolled on this uh, um, analysis of the Olympic uh, venues that will receive the, the competitions of uh, swimming and sailing and all this. Um, uh, this situation is not new. All the researchers have shown this, but the, the, it's a, a problem that it is well uh, described in Brazil, in Argentina, um, in Uruguay, but there are many countries in, in our uh, uh, continent that did not make these uh, studies. 
And um, especially in Brazil, this is very, very, uh, um, this is a great concern because all that you see in red is the part of Brazil that, that has less than 10% of uh, collection of sewage. In Brazil, we treat less than 30% of all sewage that is produced in uh, the domestic or the rural uh, settings. This is, uh, you see that the, the problem of non-treated non sewage being um, uh, discharged in the environment has a huge uh, co relationship with the uh, mortality or the morbidity due to rotavirus. That was shown many times in many, many uh, uh, pub, uh, publications. And you do not see this kind of uh, relationship when you deal with something that is not transmitted by water, like respiratory diseases. So there is clear relationship between what we do with sewage and the uh, occurrence of gastroenteritis in people. We published a lot of these uh, papers, uh, and uh, there is there are something like three or five great uh, research research groups in Brazil dealing with the the matter of the contamination of uh, the environment with these viruses. Um, I will show you some of them in more detail, this, just to tell you how, how these things are going. Uh, this one is about one of these uh, enteric viruses, uh, which we call uh, Trichotinovirus. This is a very interesting virus because we do not, uh, if this virus really causes disease, but it is spreaded or shedded to the environment by people uh, constantly. And we made some um, studies in, in Rio Grande do Sul with this virus, and we shown that we show that uh, when you have a decent uh, rate of sewage treatment, this shedding of this virus and the, uh, to the, the 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 drinking water is very low. So the solution is there. Let's try to do this uh, as a public policy. When you look for other viruses like adenoviruses, enterovirus, and also thermotolerant and coliforms, you will also see this kind of contamination. This was a study that we made in, in lake beaches that uh, are neighbor to the uh, city of Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre is the main city of southern Brazil. and. Um, all the sewage in the, the, the city is um, discharged in Lake Guaiba, and only about 40% of the sewage is treated. Um, the, the location looks very nice when you don't smell it, because uh, sometimes it has some kind of stench when you are in these beaches, and uh, a lot of solid residues. Um, and this uh, storm water, um, pipes are sometimes um, illegally um, linked to, to household uh, septic tanks and then uh, there is some relationship with the, the storm water and you see something like 10 to, 10 to the 2 to 10 to the 4 uh, viral particles being shed uh, in these uh, waters, um, and we made some um, some samplings, and the situation is 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 very sad because we know that uh, the public policies are not driven to look for anything more than um, thick, uh, thermotolerant coliforms, and they do not have uh, any relationship with the presence of viruses. This was another huge study that we made it, that was uh, 24 months of sampling and we tried to look whether there are some physical chemical parameters that could correlate with the presence of viruses. Uh, this was made in, in uh, the, the, water the Rio do Sinus watershed or Sinus River watershed. It's the watershed that we, uh, my university is located uh, in here 
and we tried to, to do something um, that could help the, the public sector about the, the, the management of the watershed. And we made in this work a, not only the detection, but the characterization of the hosts that um, are shedding these viruses in the environment. Because adenoviruses are highly host-specific. You have uh, a number of uh, adenoviruses that infect only humans and others that infect only cows or dogs or swine or uh, avian species. Then we made uh, all these um, the, uh, detections and characterizations and we find that uh, the human adenoviruses and canine adenoviruses are most, more present and in higher loads than any other, uh, showing that the, the urban sewage is uh, a problem uh, more than the, the rural uh, sewage or the animal manure that's produced uh, in animal husbandry in our uh, watershed. Uh, you, can look, you could look that the, the, the loads uh, of viruses uh, shedded by leader in the environment are very high. There are some samples that uh, gave us something like uh, 10 to the 7 viral particles per liter. That's too much. Um, um, uh, when you try to correlate this with the risk of infection, every time that you have more than 1,000 viral particles per liter, uh, there is a 99% chances of infection of a uh, susceptible individual if he takes this water. Um, this is to compare, the, there is another work that we are doing with these samples, it's to compare the, the level the, or the viral loads in untreated uh, water and water after the conventional treatment. And um, unfortunately, uh, we know by, f we human beings know by uh, many times that the conventional treatment of water is not uh, very good to remove viruses. That's one of the motivations that the governments don't want to, to look for them because it's difficult to deal with them. Well, we published a lot of papers. We are very happy with that because uh, our salaries depend on this. Uh, but uh, we have to do something. Uh, that, that we have to do to take some actions. We are now trying to, to manage how to, to deal with it, both in, in, in uh, drinking water and also in wastewater. Uh, this is for drinking water. We, we, we made some uh, bench scale tests uh, for the removal or the destruction of viruses in, uh, for the production of drinking water. It was very effective. Uh, of course, there, there are a lot of challenges to, to, to do with using photoelectric station about the cost effectiveness of the process and all this to produce in large scales, but there are many other um, possibilities that were uh, described in, in the literature. And um, we have a huge uh, concern about the, this situation, not only in cities in Brazil, but also in the water samples that we could uh, take from dairy farms or any kind of farm, because there are no huge efforts to treat uh, these settings uh, like we do in, in urban areas. There are no money for these people to, to deal with this contamination. You can see that the solid residues are well treated, but the, the uh, manure is not treated at all. Uh, and the sad part is that is manure from cows, but uh, when you look at the, the, the scratter that is collected from people in this um, sites, it's not treated at all. Then we, we are surprised that m the most part that of the viruses that we found in these farms are actually from host, uh, the, the, the actual host was human beings. And, and that's sad because we have two problems to solve. Uh, another thing that we are doing is to, to try to, to, to help these people. This is a project that has uh, some money from the Ministry of Health in Brazil. 
we are doing uh, this kind of um, prototype that is for treatment uh, or killing of viruses and bacteria using sol only solar uh, irradiation. It has very good uh, results. It produces something like 10 liters of potable water per day. We believe that it could be used for, for small farms and, uh, and these families. Um, um, this has uh, very good results. And this is another project we, that we are doing. Swine manure is always or nearly always contaminated by, by viruses and bacteria. We are uh, studying uh, different uh, um, ways or fashions of composting this, uh, this manure and the results are also good for viruses um, depending on the, the protocol that uh, is used. Um, and we also made the experiments uh, on the, the treatment of uh, wastewater with this um, natural um, inorganic or organic uh, flocculants and the uh, results were also, well, it's possible to remove or to destroy viruses uh, if you want and if you um, deal with the idea that they, they are contaminating the environment. Uh, these are some of our partnerships. Uh, there are many and many of them are um, abroad. Um, these are the, the companies or the, the financial, uh, fund, the, the governmental funding agencies that are paying for this uh, work. And this is a f very incomplete Facebook view of my, my team. Now more than 30 persons nowadays uh, working with us in these uh, studies. Well, I, I'll be here. And uh, please uh, ask anything you want about this uh, matter. I, I appreciate very much the, the invitation, and uh, it's an honor to, for me to be here. Thank you.